All right, we are going to jump right into it. So thanks so much for joining us, everyone. My name is Julia Gurney. I'm the Associate Director for Visits and Events in the Office of Admissions. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you've joined us before on a Thursday evening, welcome back. Um, we are excited to talk about financial aid and billing and all those things that are pertinent to, to new students and their families. Um, and at this point, we're going to start with some introductions, and I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Anna. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Julia. I'm Anna Schwartz. I'm the Director of Orientation and Transitional Programs. So I am the annoying person who's emailing, texting, sending letters out to your new students, helping them hopefully get through the next steps to start their journey as new USM Huskies. Um, I put my email address uh, next to my name, so if you have any questions, you're welcome to always drop me a line. And I'm gonna introduce Mitch next. Hi, my name is Mitch Bean. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions. Uh, I work closely with first year students from York County. Uh, but primarily I'm here tonight because I oversee our merit scholarship program and some of the admission scholarships that we award uh, uh, out of our office. Uh, I'm gonna send it to Caitlin. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I am a financial aid counselor um, with Student Financial Services, working with students with last names Q to T. And I also am the coordinator of special projects, which is um, why I'm here tonight talking about financial aid and all things, um, any questions that you have, thanks. And I'll send it to Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy DeCosta. I'm the Associate Director in Student Financial Services. I am on the student account side of the house. And I am here to answer your questions about billing and payment plans. Excellent. And I don't think there's anyone left for me to throw it to. <laughs> no, you are also Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so before we start, just want to explain just a couple of kind of functions of the webinar. If you've never done a Zoom webinar before, welcome. Um, so we can neither hear nor see you tonight. Um, and so the way that you communicate with us is through the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen. Um, so as we chat, um, Caitlin and Cindy will talk for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll really open it up to questions and concerns that you might have. Um, feel free to use that Q&A box. Again, we have representation here, obviously, from admissions, orientation, and financial aid. Um, so we do, you know, feel free to ask questions that run, really run the gamut in terms of what you might have on your mind right now. Um, this is your time and your opportunity to ask those questions. Um, but at this point, we'll hand it over to Caitlin. Hi everybody, I'm Caitlin. Um, so like I said, I um, work with students with last names Q to T, um, but we at Student Financial Services have both student account staff and um, financial aid counselors that work with um, students in regard to their financial aid and billing um, and really any questions that you have um, it runs the gamut. We have lots of students that come in with lots of questions. That we're here for. Um, for students, we have, um, so for financial aid counselors, we have um, different counselors and it's based on your last names. Like I said, I work with students with last names Q to T, but we have um, different counselors that work with um, students with different last names. Um, we have offices in Gorham, Lewiston, and in Portland. Um, and when we're not remote, um, we will be staffing there and we have walk-in hours um, anytime from 8 to 4.30. We see students. Um, and right now, as we're remote, we take um, emails, phone calls, any. We can also set up a Google Hangout to talk with you. Um, really, we're there to, to serve you and to answer questions about financial aid and and billing. Um, and to figure out who your financial aid counselor is, if you go on our website, um, usm.maine.edu slash um, student financial services, and you look under people, you can figure out who your specific counselor is. And even if you're not, um, you know, for, for parents, for families, for students, um, we're there to, to help and answer questions. Typically to provide you with specific information in regard to um, your students in for account, um, we would need you to sign a release. So um, the registrar's office have, has a consent to release information form that we can just send um, to, uh, that we send to the student and they can fill out and put in who they would like us to connect with. So um, that's typically what we would ask for first to provide you with um, really specific information in regard to your student's account, because um, we don't want to it, uh, we don't want to, we want to make sure that we're adhering to all of the um, privacy laws. So, and making sure that students um, are able to say who can and can't uh, um, 
no information about their account. Um, so like I said, right now we're remote, so we are answering any questions via email mostly, but we also um, have are able to give you a call or set up a Google Hangout um, to if you wanted a more face-to-face -face conversation with us. Um, that is something that we're definitely able to do and something that is a big part of our job. Um, so for student financial services, like I said, there's the financial aid side of things. There's also the student account side of things where Cindy's going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but we work very closely together. We're basically a joint office and we we're in communication all the time. So um, we're always there um, to answer any questions for you. So in terms of filling out the FAFSA, so I know um, if you guys have incoming students, um, probably they've already filled out their FAFSA, hopefully for this year. Um, but for next, thinking about next school year, they actually, um, you're able to fill out the FAFSA starting in October, uh, which is great. So if you think about, if you want to think ahead and have students start thinking about filling out their FAFSA as soon as October for the next year, um, that's something that we typically tell students to fill it out as soon as possible um, to provide them with the most possibilities and options for um, financial aid, as well as time um, in case we need um, additional information uh, from them. Sometimes the Department of Education selects um, students and their families for something called verification, where we have to verify their income. So we like to have students be able to fill out their FAFSA as soon as possible so that we can give you guys enough time to get you that financial aid package, which I know you're looking for. Um, and so for next year, the FAFSA will take into account 2019 income information, just to think about it. It takes, it's kind of funky, but it takes two years um, before uh, the income information, uh, which is a little bit weird, um, but it's something that the Department of Education decided to do so that, to know that all of the taxes have been filled out so that you have that information on hand. Um, however, just to think about, I know um, with COVID, there's a lot of families that might be struggling more now than they were in the past. Um, we are able to do what's called an income appeal, where we could take more current um, financial information to see if that would make an impact on financial aid. And that's something we could specifically do on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and something you could connect with with, um, with your financial aid counselor. Um, if that's something that you're thinking, oh wow, my income is significantly different this year than it was you know, in 2019, that's something we can, we can definitely talk with and work, um, work with you. Um, and that's something that financial aid counselors are there for is to really um, to support you in this process. Um, and so thinking about I know Mitch, Mitch Bean's going to talk a bit about scholarships, but to think about thinking ahead, um, USM has a great scholarship portal, um, which is right on our website, um, usm.mean.edu slash scholarships. And that's um, a great resource for students and for families to take a look at to see what options we have um, available. There are a lot of scholarships, particularly that are related to specific um, majors or uh, areas of focus and you can take a look and see what might uh, work for you. Um, and those are, are really nice um, just to think about, okay, how can we think outside of the box? How can we um, get you the most free money <laughs> to be able to afford education? Because we know, um, you know, we want to make sure that students are taking out the least amount of debt and we want to support them in, in doing that. So thinking about um, scholarships, applying for those for the following year um, and also submitting the FAFSA as soon as possible to see what um, possibilities we have for financial aid. Um, and we are, um, like I said, we're always available for any questions. So if any um, students or families want to meet us, give us a phone call, um, send us an email. Um, we are by our computers and willing to meet um, every day. So it's, and we do have, like I said, we have financial aid counselors in Portland, Gorham and Lewiston. So if you're closer to Lewiston or if you're closer to Portland or closer to Gorham, um, we have counselors in each, each location. Um, so thinking, I'm trying to think if there's other things. And then also, it's hard to know with COVID. I'm not sure exactly what um, what the school year is going to look like yet, um, but typically the Finance Authority of Maine um, holds like FAFSA events where um, we also participate, um, where students and families can come in to get help with filling out the FAFSA. Um, but we also are willing to do that as well. So if you needed um, if you needed help or you're confused, 
um, by the FAFSA and by the questions that was that um, they're asking. We're also able to sit down and go with you line by line um, to see how to best support you in that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I have to say right now, uh, but definitely we're here for any questions, uh, anything. And I think, I know Cindy's gonna talk a bit about billing and payment plans and how that all works. So I'm gonna hand it over to Cindy. Hey everyone, and thank you for attending. Um, most of, or a lot of what Caitlin said also applies to us. We have offices in Lewiston, Portland, and Guam, and we're always willing to help you with any questions that you may have. Um, we'll start with fall. Typically for each semester, we offer a five payment plan. However, due to um, rescheduling our summer payment plans, we have pushed the fallout so that the first payment on the, the fall payment plan will not be due until September 15th. So it'll just be a four payment plan for fall and we'll resume the five in spring. So if you have additional charges above what you receive for financial aid and scholarships and loans, um, you can enroll in a payment plan. You'll need to do that through your Main Street account. And it's very important that you become very familiar with your Main Street account. Um, that is the, the, the best place to receive all the information. If you make any changes to your account, it will be seen there. If you drop a class or add a class, it will adjust the costs. So if you want to enroll in a payment plan, you'll need to make the first payment by September 15th. There is a one-time each semester $30 enrollment fee, and it will divide your remaining charges into four equal payments. So your first payment would be a fourth plus the $30 fee. Um, and then you do need to re-enroll each semester. So you would enroll again if you needed to for spring. And those payments would be on the 15th of the month beginning in January. As far as bills, we hope to have them in your mailbox by the first week of August. They typically, you'd be able to see your charges on Main Street and access your invoice through our TouchNet system about a week, a week and a half prior to us mailing them. So if you're really anxious to see what you owe and how much your charges are, you can sign into Main Street, hopefully by the end of July and see all of that. Um, one thing I do want to bring up is all students, undergraduate students who are enrolled in nine credit hours or more and graduate students who are enrolled in six or more credit hours, the student health insurance will be automatically applied to your account. So if you do carry your own insurance, if you are covered on your parents' insurance, you will need to take the initiative and waive that insurance policy or you'll be um, required to pay for it. So once you receive your bill and you see the insurance charge on there, please go into Main Street and um, I'm sorry, not Main Street, go on to the USM website, just put student health insurance into the search box and you will be able to waive out of the insurance. You will need your policy and your policy number, but other than that, please do it because it's this year, um, I believe for the full year, the cost is, I don't have the final figures, but I believe it's $2,250 that you'll be, you'll be required to pay. So, um, I think that's all I have. Unless there's any questions or anything else I should throw out there. And I awesome. forgot, sorry, there was oh, one yeah, thing Caitlin, that I, go sorry, ahead. Yeah. I was like, oh no. Um, just like Cindy had said, with keeping an eye on Main Street, that's really, really important for financial aid as well. Um, we'll be sending emails and you'll get um, messages if there are changes to your financial aid. Um, and typically for students, we set up students with the assumption that they're enrolled in at least 12 credits for financial aid. But if you um, are going to be enrolled in fewer credits, you would let us know, um, usually via Main Street, when you accept your financial aid package, you can write, there's a, a questionnaire at the end where you can say, hey, I'm actually gonna be enrolled in six credits for fall and 12 credits for spring, just so that we can adjust your package so that you don't have a surprise later on. Um, and that's for, you know, for, I know, a lot of families are watching, but for students to just make sure that they're keeping on Main Street for that, as well as um, 
outside scholarships, if you're receiving any outside scholarships, if you could let our office know too, so that we can make sure we incorporate that into your financial aid package sooner rather than later, so that we have the most accurate package for you. So those were a couple things I wanted to say, but thank you, that's it. <laughs> awesome, thank you both. Uh, before we jump into questions and feel free to start typing those questions, I just wanted to know if Mitch wanted to add anything about his role of being a scholarship coordinator and your work with students and maybe, you know, about the resources that are available when I'm looking for additional scholarships, things like that. Yep, um, certainly. So um, the big program that I oversee in the admissions office is the merit program. So any students uh, who are joining us tonight who are awarded merit would have been given that scholarship at the time of admission. Uh, and I, I wanna jump back to what Caitlin said about the credit load. Um, it's really important that incoming students, if they decide they're gonna take um, less than 15 credits in a given semester, so 30 credits in a year. Um, it's really important that they reference the scholarship agreement letter because students need to maintain full-time enrollment while completing 30 credits in the academic year in order to keep their merit scholarship. So um, I have a lot of conversations with students who decide to drop down in a credit load. And as soon as you come under 12 credits, your merit scholarship isn't applicable um, to your bill anymore. So it just really is important that students and families understand what you're responsible for as far as your academic load goes um, to make sure you don't lose certain scholarships. Um, and then there are, you know, as an incoming student, a lot of our uh, scholarships have been, were awarded usually in January sometime, um, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be eligible for any other scholarships that we offer at the university moving forward. Um, there is a lot of money um, in departments um, from donors for the university, from our advancement office, uh, for continuing undergraduate students or graduate students at USM. So really that, that scholarship link that Anna provided, thank you Anna, um, is, is a wealth, figuratively and literally, of information on how you can make college more affordable. So I would encourage you to take a look at it, see if you meet the requirements for any of them. Um, oftentimes there's a component where you have to file your FAFSA. So if you think, you know, my, my parents make too much money, I'm not gonna get anything, so I'm not gonna fill out my FAFSA. Not all of them are need-based, but you still have to require a FAFSA. So take a little bit of time um, to complete that document. Uh, and that way you can give yourself the best chance moving forward to um, apply and, and be eligible for any aid that we might be able to offer um, as a continuing undergraduate or, or a new student at USM. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch. We have a lot of really great questions that are coming in that I'd love to answer live. Um, and so I'll, um, I'll put Mitch on the spot, uh, Caitlin on the spot. Um, Question that we always hear all the time um, is does USM have any more scholarships available or merit-based scholarships? Um, I'll let you guys take it away. So I'll, I'll hop in. Um, we did extend our merit scholarship deadline. Usually it's uh, April 1st. Um, given everything that's going on right now, we understand Students have had to change plans, um, are looking for uh, an alternative option for their education. Um, and we're really just trying to be a support for students and families. So um, as of now, we've extended the deadline for merit-based scholarships to June 30th. Uh, if you, obviously, if you're getting this invite, if you're here, it's likely you're an admitted and matriculated student at USM. Um, if you didn't receive a merit, uh, I'm going to encourage you to reach out to me and I can take a look at your account and see what it looks like. Um, students generally are eligible for merit if their GPA is a 2.75 or higher on a 4.0 scale. Um, so feel free to reach out to me if you think your GPA is there and I can take a look for you. If your school isn't a 4.0 scale, um, we convert it to that uh, using some math, which isn't my strength, but we work with several people who um, excel in that arena. Uh, and there's some, some packaging formula and things like that that go is, goes into determining what the GPA is. But um, I'll put my, my email address in the chat so that everyone has that and you're welcome to reach out to me and I can take a look. Um, if you were admitted in November and had a 2.68 GPA, 
um, but really crushed it your senior year and you moved past that 275 threshold, um, I would encourage you to reach out to me and appeal your merit decision because uh, I can take a look again and see if there's anything we can do for you. Uh, I do this on a case by case basis for students and it doesn't bother me, um, especially where the deadline is in 12 days. Uh, you know, I, I feel confident saying we should be able to award some merit to you as a student at this point in time if your GPA has changed. So shoot me an email. I can take a look to see if we have the most updated transcript from your school. Um, and that way, uh, if you are eligible, we might be able to help you out a little bit more. Awesome. And, you know, I'd love for Caitlin to touch base on something that I think obviously it, it might have happened to anybody in the audience, but, you know, significant, significant change in, in financial situation. Um, what should what should people be doing? Who should they reach out to? What kind of paperwork is involved? So, yeah, that's a great question and one that has come up a, a lot for us because of because of the whole pandemic and it's impacted. I know I think everybody at <laughs> some level. Um, so, for students, what um, and families, what I'd recommend is having the student um, or the family member reach out to the financial aid counselor. Um, so, in that in our website. Um, student financial services under people, we list the um, counselor who is specifically working with your last name. Um, and that would be who I'd reach out to. Um, there are, there's definitely um, a little bit of paperwork involved, um, but we take, you know, we're, um, we're willing to look at any situation where income has changed significantly, um, you know, because right now, even for this year, um, because they take into account 2018 information for this current year, but I know for a lot of students, even 2019 or 2020, um, income information is a lot different um, for students. So when I'm doing them, you know, with, with a bunch of students right now, it's basically we need to have your 2018 tax information to verify that first um, with the Department of Education, and then we're able to take into account either 2019 or 2020 information, tax information, if that makes sense for you, um, to see what would, if it would provide you with more grant money, basically more need-based aid, um, whether it be in grant money or um, a subsidized loan. Um, so first we would need um, but the, the financial aid counselor will be able to work with you through exactly the pieces of information, so you don't have to remember it right now, but we need to verify the 2018 tax information first, um, and then we would take the uh, either the 2019 or the 2020 information um, next. So the 2020 is a little bit different because we're still obviously in the year. Um, we typically start those adjustments or those appeals in July um, because we're able to predict out um, maybe what the income might be for the next six months if we have the information from the first six months six months um, of 2020. Um, so typically for those situations, we would need things like, um, you know, W-2s or pay stubs, things like that. But we'll be able to work with you um, individually about what we would need in particular. Um, but it's basically for us to see, okay, we have 2018 um, income information versus 2020 or 2019. What, um, what would it provide you in grants or subsidized loans? Um, how, what more can we, how can we like assist you more um, if we want to take into account different year um, of income? So we can definitely, definitely do that. It's just um, something that you do specifically with your counselor. Awesome, thank you. Um, so question about payments. Um, if you plan on paying your bill all at once instead of over the course of a payment plan, when is the due date? That's a really good question. We are still, um, we're, we're trying to make the university, all seven campuses um, consistent. So they're still discussing this. At this point in time, it, we believe that it's going to be on August 15th, but the date will be on the bills when they come out. Excellent. So if it changes till September 17th, um, Sorry, September 15th, it will be on the bill as September 15th. Excellent, but regardless, that date will be on your bill. Exactly, yeah. Awesome, excellent. Um, and how do you go, and this could be for Caitlin too, but how do you go and accept your financial aid package? So your student's been packaged, um, they log into their main street, they should be able to see all their loans. How do they go about accepting those loans or scholarships or grants or whatever they've gotten? Yeah, that's a great question. So on, on their Main Street Student Center, there's a section called financial aid. So underneath that part, there's a 
um, a link that says accept decline awards. And so you click on that link um, and then you're able to see the scholarship, the grant money, and then the loans. So all of the free money, like the grants um, and scholarships are automatically accepted because um, we assume that you would want free money. <laughs> so those are automatically accepted, but then we have loan offers in there and they depend on your grade level. Um, and you can accept what you want. You don't have to accept all of it. It's, it's basically whatever you feel like would be helpful for you. And they are um, for the academic year. So you accept it for the entire year for both um, fall and spring. Um, so it's a quick and easy link. And then at the end, that's where we have that questionnaire saying your um, enrollment plans for fall and spring and if you have any outside scholarships. Awesome. Speaking of outside scholarships, um, how do you go about reporting um, that you've received new scholarships? Yeah, so that's a great question. In that questionnaire, it does ask you um, if you've received any outside assistance, um, and that could be scholarships or it could be something like, you know, veterans uh, benefits, things like that. It would be something that you would put in there. Um, but if you say you forget to do that in questionnaire, that's totally fine. Um, the student can just shoot their um, an email to um, their financial aid counselor just to say, hey, I'm getting this outside scholarship. Um, and typically what happens is student accounts also um, needs to know about that as well to see um, how that um, scholarship can get to to USM um, but to let us know about the amount that they're um, getting you can just let us know via email and I, know, I don't know if Cindy wants to talk about um, the account side of things for the scholarship if a student is awarded a scholarship and there is something that we need to do as a university send a, the donor an invoice or um, student registration information we also, as Caitlin said, we also need a copy of that letter. Um, and I didn't really touch on veterans, but if there are, if any student has veterans benefits, whether it's a dependent waiver or post 9-11 benefits, they should touch base with me as well. I handle third party and lucky enough to receive any of those benefits, just give me a call or send me an email. Excellent. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in, which is really fantastic. Um, I'm gonna, let's, let's just jump into the, the inevitable question that I think is on everyone's minds. And I'm actually gonna hand it over to Anna because I feel like Anna always does a really great job about explaining and talking about this. Uh, so uh, the question is USM planning on having a, a semester on campus. If not, how will that affect charges, billing, et cetera? These are the big questions that are on everybody's minds. So I'm going to hand it over to Anna. Sure, sure. What I will share is that we, as a University of Maine system, are still in the process of making some of these decisions. So just in case you don't know, the University of Southern Maine is part of a system of, of seven schools in total. So we make um, some centralized decisions together. Um, the, the, we anticipate being able to make an announcement to the larger community around the 1st or 2nd of July and we'll have answers to those questions. So please definitely be monitoring your emails, encourage your students and students, if you're on here, check your USM emails that day or your main.edu emails to stay up, up to date. We're working very hard to you know, take into account all of the health and safety standards that, that our uh, governor and our state have um, placed on the K through 12 and higher ed, uh, um, system in the state. And um, once we get a little bit more clear guidance from the centralized UMaine system, we'll be able to have specific answers for the University of Southern Maine. And I'll also share a link to, to a page that updates information about that. So just in case you don't have access to an email or maybe your student isn't sharing some of that information with you where we post it. I think this is one of the benefit of those sessions is now parents can feel empowered with that information to be like, where is your Main Street account? <laughs> Let me look at it. Um, all right, so next question. Uh, when do you have to accept your financial aid by? Is there a certain date that you have to accept that award by? We typically recommend students to accept it as soon as, you know, as soon as they can, um, just so that we can make sure um, because we don't want them to get any accrue any late fees um, because once you have that financial aid um, say 
you've accepted your financial aid and it's pending in your account, um, then we'll make sure, you know, then you'll know what you owe, what the rest uh, of the bill might be. Um, so we always recommend students be um, accepting it as soon as possible um, so that they can, um, they can see what they will owe after. Because um, I know, you know, like I said, uh, financial aid can change if enrollment changes, but we always uh, recommend students accepting it um, as soon as possible. And I know it might be helpful for students to see their bill first um, to see, okay, hey, what are my charges for this semester? Um, and, you know, and if they did, if students do not want as much loan as they initially accepted, you can always let us know and we can reduce that loan for you. So you don't, you're not locked in necessarily when you accept your financial aid. You can say, hey, wait, I, you know, I saw the bill and I don't need this much. You can let us know. And I don't know if Cindy wants to share it all about that piece. No, just the sooner that, that you accept your award, the, the easier it is for all of us. Awesome, thank you. So we did have a question come in about um, how, where they will see how much they owe per semester. Um, you can check if you want to talk a little bit about kind of how Main Street kind of breaks it down of their cost of attendance. Um, but really, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Cindy, that really comes with, with your bill um, come August. Is that correct? That is correct. There are estimates on the website, but your tuition and fees are based on the number of credit hours that you're enrolled in. So we, although we can give you an estimate, if you you'll be in fifty credit hours semester, we can give you an estimate, but you will not be able to see the actual bill until you're enrolled, and the charges are are posted to your Main Street account. So the most current and up to date information will be found on your Main Street account. So if you you log into the portal, and you go to your student self service. You'll see the top section will contain your academic information, what classes you're enrolled in. The next section down is your finances and you will see a view, pay my bill. And so you can follow those links. You can get a summary of your charges. You can change the semester that you wanna look at. You can put in specific dates. So you can, you can extract pretty much any information you want from, from your Main Street account. Excellent. All right, so the projected expenses for the academic year um, include room and board, depending on what you selected, I think, during the admissions process. Um, but does it, is, it, is the $2,000 insurance also included in that estimate for the projected expenses? Um, I don't believe so. We, we, our page does not have that. I don't know if the admissions page on their estimates that they have, if that's included or not. Awesome. Another question about estimated expenses. So it looks like um, from some, you know, person's experience that the estimated expenses um, were for the 2019-2020 year. Mm -hmm. um, have the new rates been posted or estimated rates? And if so, maybe one of our staff members could find a link to that if, they, if it exists yet. We're reading from, I'm sure Caitlin or, or Cindy will, will mention, this is another one of those system decisions that we're waiting from, mm. the decision from the system to be communicated. But feel free to jump in. The, um, the upcoming year, Tuition and fees will be set at the Board of Trustees meeting. We do not have that information yet. We hope to have that um, within the next week or two. We obviously need it before we post We should have that very soon. And as soon as we receive it, we will put it on the website. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we have another question. Uh, their student mentioned that they could get a loan through the school. Um, and do you, and you know, this is an opinion, right? So we're not also, we're also not financial advisors here, um, but do you think it's better to go through a bank or to get a, maybe a federal unsubsidized or subsidized loan or whatever you, we may be offering in the financial aid process? 
So looks like you muted, Caitlin. Am I unmuted? It's okay. Sorry. Uh, we, we do typically recommend students take a look at the um, federal loans first, just because um, typically the interest rates are lower than private loans. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely your decision and your choice to take a look at alternative loans, private loans through different lenders like Sally Mae or a bank. Um, but typically federal loans provide lower interest rates and also have more options for students such as, you know, for parents or if they need to defer their loans. They also have that embedded six month grace period for loans um, that not all private loans or banks have. Um, so we usually recommend, you know, students take a look and see what they're offered first by the federal um, government. And then if they need additional loans, definitely look into alternative loans. But some, you know, some students, like I said, it, it's not my decision. We just want to give people the, the information. Um, and this year, which has um, been really the one, not one good thing about this year, but a good thing about this year is that the interest rates have decreased significantly um, for the federal loans. Um, it's 2.75%, um, which is a much lower, um, lower interest rate than it was previously. So, um, but we're also willing to talk about options. Um, just so you know, when you do apply for loans through a private bank, they do a credit check. Um, so typically students would need like a co-signer because um, usually, you know, it depends on, on your situation as a student, but sometimes students do not have any credit. Sometimes they do. Um, but we usually recommend students do take a look at their federal loans first, just because of they have more options in terms of lower interest rates and then more options for repayment. And they also have like after, you know, after you graduate, um, a lot of different repayment plans, like income-based repayment plans. Um, so it's not, you're not stuck into, um, this is the amount that I have to pay back monthly. Um, but we're definitely willing to talk about those options. Um, but we usually recommend federal loans first and then take a look at alternative loans. Excellent. Um, this also goes back to kind of those subjects on whether or not we are, are in-person or virtual. Um, but will online classes be available this fall if USM does not open? Uh, and any idea of cost? So I'll share that we are we are actively working to plan for um, hybrid a hybrid situation, which could potentially include some face-to-face -face classes, some in-person classes, some entirely online classes, some classes that. Um, uh, can be shifted from being face to face to being online. So if that is if that is the decision on July first, or if goodness forbid on you know August twenty eighth we learn that that something is impacting our ability to to move forward with face to face classes, we'll be able to absolutely transition to have online classes. And I think the cost of those classes are that is also dependent on the uh, tuition and fees that will come from the board of trustees. Absolutely. If there are any more questions? I know that Mitch is working on the last one. Caitlin, I was wondering, um, are, could you share a little bit about, I'm gonna have to, the, what is it, iGrad? And as, as a resource, as we have some questions about financial planning and that as a resource, it's available to students now that they're part of the Husky family. And that was something I was going to talk about, so I appreciate you reminding me. Um, yeah, so iGrad is something that is accessible to all USM students for free. It's a really great resource. Um, it's on, I'd, maybe someone can link, <laughs> link to the iGrad website, um, but it has a lot of different tools in terms of financial literacy tools. So there's um, different pieces about, you know, building your credit or loans or even scholarships. It's um, our scholarship portal has a link for external scholarships, but um, iGrad also has um, some great resources in terms of national scholarships that you can take a look at. Um, but you can, I mean, there's a wealth of resources on there. Um, you can take a look. There's like little mini courses you can take. Um, I know I looked at it for budgeting, <laughs> you know, it's just different. We all need some financial help at some point. So I think it's helpful for, for students when they're trying to think of um, when they're in this, um, you know, new place of how do I afford college? What, how can I, you know, reduce my expenses, things like that. Um, and even use it now, use it later. Um, there are really great resources on there um, that are free for USM students. So 
And my um, colleague, Nancy Varon, also, um, who's also our scholarship coordinator, um, works with uh, financial literacy piece and does a lot around iGrad. Um, she has done different um, events throughout the last year, um, letting students know about it and its resources. So she's a great um, person to talk to about that as well. Um, but it is, it's something that's free and easy and you can, since everybody has, you know, the Main Street account now, you can um, look, log in there um, and see what might be helpful for you and for your situation. It's an awesome resource. I feel like one of the biggest things I learned in college was financial literacy. So that's an awesome resource. Um, okay, awesome. So we've cleared our Q&A, but if you still have more questions, feel free to get typing. Um, but I just wanted to, while we wait for any last minute questions, I usually like to ask our panelists um, a final piece of advice for a parent and a family member who is supporting a student going into their first year or you know maybe not their first year of college but maybe they're a transfer student um, and so uh, we can really start with anybody anybody have any final pieces of advice first of all I just want to say welcome to everyone welcome to USM and becoming part of Husky um, Husky Nation I guess but don't let it intimidate you. Don't overlook your bill. If you have a bill, if you don't know how you're gonna pay that bill, please give us a call. That's what we're here for. We're here to, to help you, guide you. The first year can be by far the hardest. Um, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to wade through. So just give us a call, send us an email. It's kind of hard to call right now because as Caitlin said, we are working remotely, but send us an email. Um, someone will help you out. Don't don't get overwhelmed. Don't let it get you down. It's it's a tough year, and we'll all get through it. Um, I would have a similar sentiment. I think just reaching out if you have questions, and and don't ever be afraid. There's no dumb question. We you know we're able to help um, in any way that we can, and I think you know finances and financial aid can seem really overwhelming um, for a lot of students um, and for definitely was for me when I was in school. So I think we want to help demystify <laughs> loans and grants and scholarships and how to afford college and we're here to support you and answer any questions that you have. So I think like Sydney said, just reach out and don't be afraid to, to email us or call us um, so that we can help you. So the financial aid department at the college I attended knew me on a first name basis when I walked in. Um, I knew right from the get go that they were going to be a resource for me. Uh, and I think it's important for students to see that, um, you know, uh, forming a relationship with that person, really having a go to when you have questions about your finances. It made me very comfortable as a student. Um, to be clear, I was a full Pell student, which means I didn't have much money to go to college, so I relied on the expertise um, of those, those people who worked in that office to help me really kind of navigate what my bill looked like, what were my payment plans, and what were my options financially to ensure that I could stay in school and that finances wouldn't get in the way. So um, don't be afraid to pick up the phone or, or utilize walk-in hours when we're back on campus or, or send an email to your counselor um, with any of those questions because they're here to help students um, kind of navigate a difficult and what can be an overwhelming process. So um, utilize the resources that are on campus and uh, we'll do the best we can to, to make sure that that isn't a burden for you. I guess I will go next. Um, I'm going to share yet another link in the um, uh, chat box for folks. So this is a link to our parent and family resources page. So we have a wealth of resources that are directed towards certainly our new students and our students in general, but also for, for you all. Um, and I definitely echo every other person who is encouraging you to ask and reach out when and if you have questions. There is gonna be a question that is gonna stop you in your tracks and we wanna be able to help you. Everybody has one or two or three of those things and we want to make this process as 
as smooth as possible for you and for your new students. Um, definitely reach out. Uh, the Dean of Students Office in Orientation and Transitional Programs will also always help direct you to the appropriate resource in student financial services, admissions, or other departments if necessary. But we can't help if you don't let us know that you need some help. So definitely help us help you. Little Jerry Maguire moment there. <laughs> Well said. Uh, so Cindy, Caitlin, Mitch, Anna, thank you all so much for joining tonight uh, for this conversation. Great questions, great interaction. Uh, for those of you, and I want to note this for this week in particular, um, if you're just joining us for the first time and you're loving these conversations and you want to learn more and you want to be a part of this a little bit more, um, let me know because we're considering um, continuing this webinar series into July, but we want to know if this is something that you want to do, right? So um, we want to know if this is helping you and if you want to hear from other departments. Um, I've emailed you lots of times. This is how you got your Zoom link. Um, so feel free to shoot me an email if, you, if there are other resources and departments that you wanted to hear more from on campus. Um, our two previous webinars are up on our YouTube page. So if you wanted to learn more about health services and our advising um, office, feel free to check those out. Um, again, we try to keep it short. We try to keep it convenient. Um, and really, we're just here to help you, um, you know, support your student through this process. Um, so thank you again. And I will let everyone uh, enjoy the rest of their evening. I hope it's not too hot where you are. Uh, it's feeling quite warm here in Maine. Um, but I hope you have a great rest of your evening. And we'll see you next time. Next Thursday, we'll be talking about residential life. So thanks, everyone.